Hello creator, welcome to Odessa Rose Creates. I'm Robin Schmidt and I'm an independent Chalk Couture designer and I'm going to share with you my love of creating with Chalk Couture. We are a company that creates reusable silkscreen transfers, Chalkology chalk paste and inks if you want to create on fabric or stone, um, glass, anything you can heat set in the oven or fabrics you can heat press and make permanent. Uh, but generally I use Chalk Couture's chalk paste and um, we're gonna silk screen over those screens and recreate over and over with them because you can use them up to six to eight times if you take really good care of them and possibly even more. Uh, today I saw an inspiration piece. The background was, um, I think was actually uh, kind of like a basket weave, whitewashed. It was really cute and then they had the sentiment on top so my thought was how can I create a basket weave look without having a basket weave silk screen transfer which Chalk Couture would that would be a really good idea um, so I thought of the seeing spots seeing spots is a transfer when I first thought saw it I thought mm, what am I gonna do with that? It's just it's just a bunch of spots. It's just this, right? But I've used this over and over. I've used it um, on my big piece I did for the art contest. I used it in the barnyard right here. All right, so it became like little mud puddles, mud patches in a barnyard. I've used it for a brick brick road in my uh, vintage bug piece, which is upstairs on my mantle. And uh, yesterday, or what day was that? I used it for, oh, the background of my hug me pot. Made it look like little uh, mountain rock or little river rock. Um, I feel like I used it another time, but today I'm gonna use it for basket weave. And I already tried it this morning on this piece here. So you do it in one direction, you dry it, and then you turn it and do it in the opposite direction, and you kind of have this basket weave look. And you want to make sure you do like a tone on tone in the background or very neutral, and then use like bright white on it. Um, if you do a lighter basket weave color, you could do black on it. So this was my experiment. I just did, just finished. So I'm going to show you kind of how I did that um, and some some t tricks to um, make sure you know you can get it on there smooth so it, it turned out pretty cool I chose gray background this was white it was a repurposed sign had something on it. I had already painted it over with my raw silk fusion mineral paint but I uh, kind of washed on some gray because the side was already painted gray so I wanted the gray background and, and did this in camel color and then just bright white um, on the top. So it turned out pretty cool, All right? So we're gonna do that on this little sign that I need to paint out first and then um, we'll get the background color put on the, the basket weave and then we're gonna put a little sentiment on top. So let's get started. I'm going to see who's on with me this morning so I can say hello. Oh, I feel a sneeze coming on. Oops, I don't have it turned down. I think I'm going to sneeze. Oh, <laughs> I got that tickle up in there. Okay, good morning, Rosa. Good morning, Lisa. Good Lord. Good Lord. Hello, hello. Good Julianne. Cindy, good morning to Lisa. I still think I'm going to sneeze. I'm gonna try to paint this without uh, taping around the border. Mm. Mm. Maybe I should tape around, but I'm gonna just try to use a really good brush. And you know, yesterday, I believe it was, maybe it was the, I, I'm getting my days mixed. What did I make yesterday? Oh, my log, my log with the house in the middle. I love that piece. Uh, I think that's where I talked about if it's white with black lettering, usually I'll paint it black. 
or if it's black lettering with white lettering, black background with white lettering, then I'll paint it white because I think it kind of helps. Sometimes I like to create that border, plus I think it helps hide the letters faster and easier. So, but I don't really want a black background, so I'm just going to brush on black to kind of neutralize the lettering, and then um, we'll kind of do some grays and kind of like I did on this piece here. So, kind of the same color tones. So, let me grab um, a brush. It was raining this morning, so I didn't go for a walk. So I came down and started creating right away because I had this idea of this whole basket weave. Seeing if I could somewhat create a basket weave and it turned out pretty good. I think a pattern would be really cool. I could see how a pattern could be made or a, a transfer. Um, so I might need to send that in as a suggestion. Man, my nose is, ugh. Probably could have sanded this a little bit. It looks like the letters are slightly raised. But too late now. Already got my paint on it. Oh well. This brush is really wet, so the paint's really wet and thinned down. We'll dry it and just put on a second coat real quick, and then I'm gonna actually paint it uh, gray, I think. And I'll try to do the same coloring as the one I did. We're just hopping on. My little basket weave look I did with the seeing spots. Super cute. Keeping it in neutrals. That's what people want. I like a little color in my life, but. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Sherry. Denise, good morning, good morning. Talisa, Cindy, Black, I already said. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. I have a tickle ooh, up in my nose. I know it's going to make me sneeze. This hair, I'm sorry about my hair, but I think she's trying to, wants it to grow out, but I'm, it's at that ugly stage. And I don't get my hair cut for two more weeks. Uh, I'll probably say just chop it off because I feel like I can't do long anymore. I had long hair when I was younger, but I don't know if she necessarily wants my hair to be long, but she, I mean, total length, but uh, she's trying to grow out the layers. It's just driving me nuts. I have to put a hairpin in it when I'm working. I'm using uh, my Fusion Mineral paint, of course. You can use any paint. Got a big ridge of it there. And I'm not too concerned about getting up to the edges. You can do that with the gray paint. Okay, dry that one a little bit and then we'll just go ahead and put on our gray. This is a cute little sign. I got it on clearance, but it has a little easel built in it. So when we're done, it'll, it'll stand on its own on an easel. Those were kind of cute. A little clearance find at the HL. I 
Angie, Linda, good morning. Lena, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so we've got that covered. Now we're gonna um, do black or uh, gray. I'm just gonna use the same brush. I don't care if it mixes in with the black. I put the paint right on my brush so I don't, A, I don't waste any paint by putting it on a plate. And I'm not having a mess with cleaning a plate or a tray or anything. Now I'm getting up a little bit closer to the frame to get the white covered. Does anybody else like to buy discount signs and repurpose them? <laughs> Takes more time, obviously, because you got to paint over them. But um, just kind of fun, something different. They have different sizes and different shapes uh, to coordinate with our um, chalk tour pieces. Which of course are ready to go and create on. It's the last little bit of white right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab uh, some really light brown, like. Deco Arts Americana Cocoa and try to um, bring in a little bit lighter brown color in it. I'm just going to wet that brush and see if we can just blend it in with the gray a little bit. This will kind of give it more of a weathered wood look when you do grays and grays and tans together. So shiny, I can't see out this reflection. So I'm just kind of blending it a little bit more, smoothing it out. OK, 
Okay. We'll call that good. I'm going to dry it really well. Yes. I've done that, bought porch boards at Hobby Lobby at 75% off and repainted them and repurposed them. They're lighter weight. They're really lightweight which I think they could blow over easier if they are outside and then wind hits them. Um, but they usually have a hanger on them too, so you could hang them, which is nice. I mean, compared to buying a, a board at the home center, it's a pretty good deal. This has a little bit more of a black background where this has more of a creamy background. You see where I made my little basket weave look. I'm gonna make sure this is nice and dry. We put a lot of paint on there. We also want to make sure it um, cools off a little bit. I'm just gonna try to see if I can clean out any of this paint I did. Here on the sides, I might be a little late for that. <laughs> yep. All I'm doing is scratching off the paint on my surface. Let's see. Yeah, those porch boards at Hobby Lobby are super lightweight. I mean, they're nice. You can carry a bunch. Um, you know, they have a usually have a hanger on them, so you can hang them up if you want to hang them on the wall, whether it's outside or inside. Um, but even my he big, heavier boards can blow over in the wind. So these are really going to blow over in the wind. But sometimes people put them inside, you know, like in their foyer area or entry area or more in a screened in porch or something and you don't really get the wind. So you just got to take things into consideration sometimes. I'm going to cool this down. There's a lot of paint on here. I hope it doesn't peel up. But we're gonna wax it once I get it cooled down. You can still kind of see because the lettering was raised and I should have sanded it. You can kind of see it a little bit if you tilt it just right. But I think we're gonna keep it busy enough with the uh, pattern in the background that you won't really notice it. When it's all said and done. All right, I'm just gonna throw on some natural wax. You can use any uh, finishing wax. And this is 
A to hopefully to help keep my paint in place and not stick to my transfer. That's my main reason right now. Because I'm not taking the time to let the paint cure and harden and stick. <laughs> and I'm just kind of doing this quickly so I can show you. on there. Oh, just a thin coat of wax. Okay. Um, Seeing spots. Crazy thing about this. When I ordered it, I thought, oh, I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I used it a lot. And I accidentally ordered two. And I'm kind of glad I did because I've already used this one a lot of times. Probably, it's still a little tacky, but I'm kind of glad I have an extra because you never know. It's in, it's currently available, but you never know when it's going to be taken off. You know, if it doesn't have very many sales, um, they could take it off the catalog next time. So, grab it because you never know when you're going to want to use it. And it looks really cute with this as a basket pattern and get all the air pockets out. So I'm gonna use Camel, and I'm running low on Camel too, because I've been <laughs> using it a lot in my uh, roads and now my basket weave. Or she could do, um, you know, like, a to like paint a cream color background and do white basket weave. I think it would look really pretty. Um, I might do something like that for Christmas time. It could be cute. Or any any time, really, but it might be kind of sharp with like a red on it for red lettering. All right, enough gabbing. Let's get this going. So try to get as close as you can in the corners. Okay, now skim it down. To a really thin layer. So you see how I'm scraping it down with my squeegee. You don't need all that paste on there anyway, no matter what you're creating, but I like to really make it thin for this. In fact, I even sand it when I'm done. Here's our first one. And then you lay that in there. I'm going to dry that. Now it does just kind of look like spots. Got a little bleed through. I'll wipe that up. But once you turn it and go the other direction, it looks more like a basket weave. So it's pretty cool.
paint peeling up around down here, so which I was afraid of not allowing it to cure. But I'm just kind of picking up the bleed through with my spit. <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you. It's toxic free. Now last time I did not wax in between. Um, and I probably won't this time, even though I got some paint picking up. And we're just gonna lay it going up and down now. And I will have to um, piece it or add on here a little bit. Before we're done. Back to the camel. This frame's noisy because it's got that built-in uh, easel on the back, so it's not laying flat. So you hear that rattling? That's what it is. is getting a little thick. This is old old paste formula. If you've ever chalked with that, you know that it dries out quicker than our new formulas. And it gets thick. You gotta add water to it. Not so much with the creamy dreamy formula my next jar of camel will be. Wow. It's really, I don't like it when it gets thick. It dries out quick. I feel like it's not even going in the screen, but we're getting there. You kind of see it? That looks kind of plaid. I mean, basket weave. Let's do this end over here. Oops, almost went the wrong way. It's hard to figure out where to kind of line up right in here. Not being as neat and tidy as I was on the first one because I'm just kind of in a hurry for you guys. See my camel is about gone. I may have another jar. I can't remember. I'll have to look. All right, let's dry this. You want to dry this really well because now you got your paste level, two different levels of paste in some areas. So your surface is pretty uneven now. So we want to dry this down really well. And then we're actually gonna sand it to make it more of a smoother surface. Because you want your next print, your lettering, 
to have a good print, so you need it to be on the smooth of a surface as possible. So we're going to dry this and then actually buff it down a little bit with a fine sandpaper. going to take really fine I don't even know the number it's a really fine grit I got this little sanding block I don't even know where I got this I'm just going to use that you'll still see your pattern there don't worry about it sanding it off I mean you could if you kept going on it but I'm just going to do it lightly and you'll see all your chalk dust setting in here but you'll be able to feel a big difference in the smoothness right you can see all my chalk dust I'm just taking a paper towel and wiping it off you can see it There's a kind of our basket weave in the background, right? And you see where I'm picking up my chalk dust from what I sanded down, and you can still see the pattern. And now even when we add a little wax, it's gonna brighten that back up a little bit because we are gonna add a little wax. And you can use, I think this, this time after, on this one I used the dark wax Sometimes that wax kind of highlights, the dark wax will kind of highlight the edges of what's left of the pattern. So I'll just uh, rub a little bit of this on it. the other day I read on on my live what kind of rag I use for my wax it's just uh, pieces of an old t-shirt and I try to get um, as much cotton in it as I can I don't know if I, I'm trying to decide what makes a difference because sometimes the material breaks down really quickly so I thought maybe those had more um, either more natural fibers or less natural fibers I'm just trying to figure that out okay so here's what I did before I came on live, just experiment. And that's kind of what we're doing now. Kind of mimicking this, okay? But we're gonna put a little different sentiment, obviously, because this is a different size of a sign. And this has a little bit darker gray in the background because I did put black on it first. So you could even, uh, I'm gonna still do my print in white, and I might even come in and whitewash my frame a little bit, just to, pop off that white a little bit. Um, we're gonna do uh, Love Lives Here. It has all these cute little uh, sayings in it. And it's got some cute little hearts. Since mine is a rectangular pattern and not a square pattern, I thought about uh, any of them. You could do like Bless This Home. Then I thought about doing like three hearts, or these four hearts coming down versus going across, coming down on the side. And we're gonna do those in white. So 
probably somewhere in here. And I haven't used this uh, piece of transfer, so I mean, I'm going to put a little fuzz on the back with uh, my fuzzing cloth. Just gonna press it on it a couple times. I'm gonna place this here. Bless this home. I just like to make sure they look level. Okay, press this down really well. My gosh. I had a heck of a time getting level with that other transfer earlier today. Like, let's go with that. Okay. And get my bright white. In my shopping cart link, I, I put in uh, seeing spots and this transfer here, Love Lives Here, and a jar of white paste or a single packet if you want to grab these transfers and create. Um, I guess you also need camel. I forgot about the camel uh, to do the basket weave. But um, you almost always need a jar of white. So I just, if you don't have white, Grab some white. Like I said, you can make a tone on tone white basket weave, any color actually. Just making sure I've got a really good print here going over it a few times. Uh. Yeah, it's cute. Came off really well. I actually went over this one twice. I did it once and some of the, the camel was coming through on the white because you know it's kind of hard to do white on the dark. Uh, so I allowed it to dry and then lined it up perfectly and re chalked it. So it has two, two chalkings, two printings on this one. But that turned out really cute and we're gonna add these little white stars or hearts right in here. Just to offset that off center a little bit. It's turning out really good. Like I don't think I need to print it again. The coloring is excellent. So I'm gonna add four. Just trying to decide where to place them. Uh, why did I chalk over there? I have no idea. 
Hold on. Chalked right on top of the other heart. I'm just going to pick it up. There we go. And that was easy to pick up because I have wax underneath. That's why it's easy to pick up. Trying to get my spacing equal. Oops. There. I do think I'll whitewash the the frame a little bit, just a hint. You can either do that with paste, with your paste, or um, take some craft paint. Let's just try some chalk paste since it's here. I'm using a Clorox wipe, and I'm just rubbing it on there. Let's see what it looks like. You can, of course, take it away with your wipe. I like that. So I'm going to continue around. want a hint, right? Do I find it on here? Just doing the inside edges a little bit. I'm just using the chalk paste to whitewash my frame with a Clorox wipe, which is, you know, has moisture in it, so it kind of spreads, thins that down and spreads it out. Okay, cool, right? Kind of has that mango wood look to it. I like it. If you don't want too white, just keep wiping it. It'll come off. It's chalk paste, so you can lighten it up a little bit. I like it. All right. What is done? And then even if you wanted to tone it down a little bit more, you could use the stained wax on it. But I like it like this. Kind of helps pop the white a little bit. And these two are going to look good together. 
in the same area, same room, whatever. Put this on a tray or on a little shelf. Super cute. So basket weave with the seam spots. I'm gonna try it in other col colorations, like other tone on tones, but um, like a white weave. Um, this one's a little bit darker background. You could even do, you know, any tone on tone basket weave would work. This is adorable, I never would have thought to use white, white, yep. Yep. What are you saying there, Leslie? Yep. Lysol wipes will work, baby wipes, any kind of wet wipe will work on uh, on paint or chalk paste. The chalk paste is nice because it washes off easy and you already have it here handy, so you could just use it. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks for chopping with me. I hope to be back on tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow today's Wednesday, right? So yeah, probably. If I come up with some other crazy ideas, or I might just do some simple chalking, um, use up some of my transfers. Oh, I want to do some, I need to start doing some holiday, some Christmas pillows or cozy warm pillows, cozy winter pillows. So um, maybe I'll ink a pillow tomorrow and um, we can do that. So I will chalk with you later. Bye.